Hey everybody, back with some more VHS pickups, and yeah, it's 2018 and still occasionally grab VHS, uh, something where there, uh, I don't want every video that I remember getting from the rental store or every video I had as a kid, but there are some nostalgic things that I do want to have in the video library, especially when we have our nice shelves built in our house, and there are some things that were never released again on uh, DVD or different cuts of movies sometimes, and collector's editions. There's all kinds of random various reasons to grab uh, VHS if you're into collecting old video media, and again, some things you can only find there. Plus, you know, on top of that, it's just something that I remember going to the video store and love to pick up every once in a while, and we find things pretty cheap. Actually, I think just about everything here we have uh, picked up for anywhere from a quarter to at most a dollar, and a lot of them sealed. So, uh, finally have the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie on VHS again. We have uh, two and three, and just haven't I haven't seen this on VHS since I was a kid, and I really wanted it. And I really wanted this ed edition, the uh, FHE, uh, the the tape that I remembered grabbing. And I love this movie. Uh, second and third one, you know, second one is pretty good. Third one is just okay, especially when you're a kid and in love with Ninja Turtles. But this is a fantastic movie, and as an adult, this one holds up so much better than the other two, which are still fun and um, nostalgic, but this is just a genuinely good movie, no matter what age you are, and even if you're not a, someone who grew up with the Ninja Turtles, it's still a good movie. It still holds that, you know, up to a lot of similar, even like superhero movies and things like that. Great movie. One that's the total opposite is actually terrible, even worse than I remembered, uh, but I actually really enjoyed watching this tape because it's one of those, it's so bad that it's just funny and like it's fun to watch. But does anyone actually remember this very short lived live action TV version of the Ninja Turtles? Uh, Ninja Turtles, uh, The Next Mutation. Does anyone remember that with the, uh, the female turtle there? Yeah, this, I remember being really hyped for this show because. I grew up watching the original Ninja Turtles cartoon, absolutely loving it, loving the movies. I, had, I don't even know how many toys um, for the Ninja Turtles. And then when this came out, it's like, oh man, it's going to be live action. It's going to have the costumes and stuff from the movies, and it's going to look really cool. It is a downgrade in every way. The costumes in here are laughably bad. They're like Power Rangers costumes, uh, particularly for certain characters and some of the villains and stuff. And the dialogue. It took a nosedive, even in compared to the cartoon, which is mostly targeted at kids. This looks like it's targeted, it sounds and feels like it's targeted at a four-year-old. Really, everything about it is low budget, super cheap, really dumbed down. And if you take a kid show and dumb it down even further, like, oh, what is this for? You know, people, you know, just, it, it's crazy. It's so bad. It's so cheesy and terrible. I was so disappointed when it first came out. And when I saw the, you know, a tape for it though, a nice clamshell in like perfect shape, and it was like a quarter, like I got it, I gotta grab it, I gotta re see this disaster, and I actually enjoy it more now because it's so bad, and being just a big fan of turtles, and like, it's just funny, and something like, I gotta show my brother that because I think he was too young to remember that, and he likes Ninja Turtles. I gotta show him that, uh, yeah, it's really funny. One that's really good. Uh, this is, I, I really like Dario Argento, and uh, The Bird with the Crystal Plumage is really good, and this is a really fantastic VHS copy here. Uh, the, it is the, the English dub, and um, a lot of times I really like getting, if I can find, uh, particularly early to mid-80s VHS releases of movies, because it's a higher quality tape than some of the late 90s, very early 2000s. Some of the early 2000s ones I've picked up it actually degraded more over time than some of the like early to mid 80s tapes yeah that's even though uh, with magnetic degradation and things like that and, and usage over the years some of they just start holding up a lot of those really super cheap VHS towards the end uh, with some of the 80s ones if they haven't been watched to death and they've been kept in a decent environment this play is almost like it's brand new pretty much it really looks and sounds fine so it's really cool to get that in a nice beautiful like heavy clamshell it feels pretty hefty so I was really happy to grab that and a little bit more Star Trek uh, we have a muck time great episode there this is the kind of a series original series that I'm gonna have more completely finished with the DVD collection two complete sets of the original series and two complete sets on laserdisc and releases on CED and whatever so I'm not looking for a full run of Star Trek on VHS, just some uh, particular favorite episodes, so this is kind of one of the must-have, obviously. And then more Star Trek, we have Star Trek 25th Anniversary Special Edition, which was, 
I really enjoyed watching that before I remembered that. I have it in this beautiful plastic case also, protective case, because this is a really cool uh, special, and I really want to grab this on Laserdisc eventually. That'll be really cool to have, but uh, this came out, uh, I think, right before I Discover Country hit theaters, so that was a really fantastic grab there. And moving on, we have four different tapes here for the Carol Bur Burnett Show. And in the bins at Goodwill, one day they had probably 20 of these at least. All brand new sealed. Uh, two of them have been opened up since then because I've watched them before I got around to filming this. And I wasn't going to load myself up with like a huge stack of them to the ceiling. So like, alright, I'll grab three or four to, based on who some of the guests are because they have on the side here. Uh, the first one here, you have Lily Tomlin, uh, Steve Lawrence, and Alan Alda, and as soon as I saw Alan Alda as a major MASH fan, um, I had to grab that immediately, of course, so I grabbed that. And you have uh, another one here with Gloria Swanson and uh, Paul Sand. Sorry about that glare there, I know it's like creeping up, the sun's pretty bright. Um, we also have this one here, uh, Ken Berry and Bernadette Peters, who is always enjoyable. This one has Sammy Davis Jr. and Shirley McLean, so I grabbed that, and uh, yeah, grabbing these all brand new sealed is pretty awesome, and they're nice little clamshells, and I have just a small selection. I have some on DVD, The Carol Burnett Show, and uh, it's, a, it's a variety show that I enjoy, but not one that I would want to seek out, like everything. I forget how many episodes there were of that. It was on forever. Uh, like that, another one here that it was a pretty cool find. Uh, Amanda was very excited to see this too. PBS Home Video, Reading Rainbow, as two episodes, Mummies Made in Egypt and Bringing the Rain in Capiti Plain. So if you were an 80s to early 90s kid, you remember LeVar Burton. I mean, such a huge part of my childhood between Reading Rainbow, you know, one of the things that helped teach me how to read and love books, and then uh, Geordi and the voice of Captain Planet. I mean, if you were a certain age, LeVar Burton is such a huge part of your childhood. We also have adding to the Peter Sellers collection, the very, uh, the production was absolutely insane and horrible and the end product uh, depends on who you talk to, it was either a total disaster or a pretty ingenious comedy, but you have the David Niven and Peter Sellers, uh, James Bond 007 Casino Royale, which uh, I have on a couple different formats there, did not have on VHS, and poor Peter Sellers really wanting to try and play this straight and wanting to live his dreams of being the suave debonair just like a super uh, super spy and yeah <laughs> it's the whole thing is just if you looked into the background of this movie and like certain people like you know Orson Welles and Peter Sellers not wanting to be in the same room together and like Peter losing his mind and like leaving the set and yeah the thing was a strange disaster behind the scenes but I like just about everyone in that movie and it turns out to be just entertaining not a great movie honestly one of my least favorite Peter Sellers uh, movies especially one with such a strong cast it has a lot of great moments, but the overall product is just, uh, to me, is just kind of underwhelming. Uh, but I love everyone in it, and it has uh, some good scenes. And a couple of interesting ones here that I kind of broke my rule with these three as far as I have a very, because it's space, and honestly, i much rather things on Laserdisc and VHD and DVD and Blu-ray. Uh, <laughs> very, try to limit my VHS uh, collection to a lot of things, but I, I every once in a while I do break it because I find something cool. Uh, but this was, I'm very glad I grabbed this, and this was in really good shape, and I have a nice plastic case on this here, A Taste of Cartoon Network, and this was a promotional tape sent out for Cartoon Network to basically try and get uh, uh, carriers to start carrying Cartoon Network as it was coming out as a, a new network, and I remember watching the heck out of Cartoon Network back in the day. I remember Cartoon Network first started and really enjoying it. I'm uh, a big fan of Hanna-Barbera, uh, especially like 60s, 70s, and like early 80s. So I was a big fan of getting that station, having a lot of that classic stuff, and then they was also the network that got me into anime and like lots of different variety. But this was cool, not just for the selection of cartoons, which is is varied and is, is pretty decent, but it's really the promotional stuff in between each uh, cartoon that is why this is a really cool tape because uh, most of that promotional material is only exists on here. Um, so it's really fun to find and a uh, nice piece of. Uh, early childhood and inter interesting little piece of history for a network that I think has changed significantly over the years and it's really just not the same thing. And then we have another Argento thing here, uh, not anywhere near as good of a movie as uh, Crystal Plumage, but uh, Sleepless. And I grabbed this because it is actually a brand new sealed full length screener. So that is pretty cool. So you can get rid of the glare, you can see the, maybe, or make it worse. See the 
back here. But, yeah, occasionally if I find a full-length screener, if it has uh, anything interesting on the back or it's brand new sealed, sometimes I'll grab that. And we have another full-length uh, screener for the 25th anniversary of The Exorcist in a nice clamshell. So, I grabbed the two of those. They were, you know, like a quarter, so I'm like, eh. So I grabbed those, and we just have two left here. <laughs> one that Amanda came home one night, and uh, she stopped at the thrift store, and she's like, this is so stupid, so I thought you might want it. <laughs> and she grabbed from the Wu-Tang collection, Invincible Armor. <laughs> wow, I, I cannot look at this, this guy's face on the cover without cracking up. It just, it just cracks me up so much. And it's in every way the stereotype of the badly dubbed um, really, usually Shaw Brothers is usually the people that get that, usually that era gets that treatment, but yeah, the, the badly dubbed stuff that you find, uh, just the badly dubbed kung fu movie, the everything about this is like, it's just, oh my god, it's a funny experience, but painfully bad. Uh, and this was uh, one that I grabbed also, which is kind of cool from an era that I love the 80s, so this was something like, alright, not something I would normally pick up, but 1989, Playboy video Playmate calendar, so uh, nothing nudity on the cover here, so I can actually show this. But yeah, if it says 80s, uh, there's a good chance I'll at least pick it up and look at it, whether or not I'll buy it. But yeah, I had to grab that for less than a quarter. The tape, the tape itself is in really great shape. The uh, uh, case is a little beaten up on the top here, but grab that. And then I was really excited to find on video CD. And again, these were just like a buy weight, uh, cost me almost nothing. I'm like, oh wow, video CD. And that's what you find, um, and especially with TV shows. You really don't find those. If you do find them, it's so massive because they can only hold so much on a video CD. We have a bunch of uh, collections here. I found a huge set. I'm like, wow, just grabbed all three, find that immediately. And this, they are all of the show uh, Days in Shaolin. And this is so one through 10. And that is discs one through ten on each box that these are gonna open up here. So you just stack here of the discs one through ten to get the whole thing here. And then this second set here is discs eleven through twenty. And then this, I picked it up, I'm like, wow, this what the heck, this weighs nothing. It's empty. Discs twenty-one through thirty. Which I believe might be the end. It's empty, and I searched through those bins all over the place to see if maybe this was open, maybe they spilled it out, like, this is pretty tight, so... Uh, but yeah, they might have spilled it out, and maybe they're just a little scratched. Couldn't find a single one, this was just in there empty, but... You know, empty weighs nothing, so I just kind of grabbed it, uh, to at least have it sitting there on the, sh on the shelf, complete. Uh, even if it's not fully there, but, uh, it's, it's cool, it doesn't have any English, uh, subtitles. It does have two language tracks, though, it does have uh, Mandarin and Cantonese and with uh, traditional Chinese subtitles and it just got to switch turn off either the left or the right audio channels to switch languages and uh, put it on Cantonese and was, was watching and still even though I can't understand more than a handful of words basically in Cantonese it is still um, an interesting watch and something to uh, watch more in the future as I do learn a bit more so a lot of Fascinating finds. This was just really, really cool. And some additions to the VHS collection, which I think is finally kind of getting to that point where it's, it's going to be whittling down to having everything that I, that I want slash am allowing myself to have. Uh, but yeah, some really cool stuff that I was very excited to find.